Yeah, all right. Today's a video about Rox's crew, so let's just get this out of the way first. Ahem. <clears throat> Today's video will be a discussion that will involve a particular character in One Piece. This particular character is a member of the Rocks Pirates and goes by the name Ochoku. Ochoku, of course, very famous pirate, member of Rox's crew, of course. Uh, he used to live on Hachinosu before he was ousted by Blackbeard. Current whereabouts unknown, but uh, he might be still alive. There's no indication that he's dead yet, so uh, we might see him in the story. Who knows? Um, also tends to go by the name of Wang Ji! Ochoku is more of his uh, cover identity, you know what I mean? After he retired from the pirate life, he decided, you know what, I'm just going to be going by my birth name, which is Ochoku. You know, Wang, of course, you know, that's a, that's a name that strikes terror into the hearts of all pirates, right? Um, no, in, in case you're curious, in case you're genuinely curious, uh, Ochoku is how his name would be said in Japanese, but Wang Ji was a historical Chinese pirate that actually helped the Portuguese translate with the uh, Japanese to uh, bring them firearms. Like, so the Portuguese were the first people to bring firearms, like rifles and muskets, to Japan. And Wang Ji kind of helped them get to the island of Tanegashima, where he served as a uh, interpreter and translator for the Portuguese and the Japanese. And, uh, you know, for a while there, uh, muskets, like the first muskets that were brought into Japan, were actually called Tanegashima because of the island where they, you know, were first traded with the, uh, the Portuguese. So there you go. Okay, fun little historical fact for you. All all right, so we're going to be talking about rocks today. You know, I, I um, did a video a while back, uh, I think it was like a month or two ago, where I talked about the pirate code. You know, you know, being a pirate, there's a particular code you got to live by. I think I made that video in response to chapter 1079, uh, which what happened with Eustace Kid and Shanks, and uh, yeah, you, you see how that went down there. So, you know, there's a pirate code, certainly. Uh, Whitebeard abided by the code, Shanks abides by the code. Even a pirate like Big Mom, who who seems to be very chaotic in a lot of her actions, still abides by a particular code of conduct. And uh, somebody in the comments section, I remember, and this was recent, somebody in the comments section was basically like, well, Rox did not follow that code at all, and, you know, was a really famous pirate. So what about that? Because I think I said something in the video, like, in order to be a successful pirate, you, you need to abide by this code. But then what about Rox? Because Rox they flaunted the code all the time. You know, they got into fights. I mean, they killed each other on Rox's ship all the time. Okay, so you have something like, you know, Blackbeard murdering Thatch on Whitebeard's ship, and then Whitebeard is enraged by that. He's like, you can't live in this world without a code of conduct. I'll hunt Teach down myself. You know, that kind of stuff, right? And so that's happening on Whitebeard's ship. That's his reaction. Meanwhile, people are, like, shooting and stabbing each other on Rox's ship on, like, a nightly basis. They're getting into fights. I just realized, you know, it's like the Roger Pirates are kind of like the swashbuckling adventurers. You know, kind of like, um, you, you might read, like, a pirate story for, like, little kids, and it's not really all that violent. It's just like, Yarg me hearties! I be, I be Bluebeard the pirate! And I'm going to go and un uncover my treasure that I, I buried on that island with a giant skull on it, matey! Shiver me timbers! You know, maybe that was a little bit more Roger. I mean, Roger was a badass. Let's not get that, that mixed up. He definitely killed a lot of people. But that's more about the adventure and the romance of being a pirate and all that kind of stuff, right? And then meanwhile, over on Rox's ship, we had just like an absolute slobber knocker every night. Um, it's just like, hey, Whitebeard, you know, yeah, Kaido, you know, you ate the last brownie in the fridge. He's like, oh, I didn't eat your brownie. Are you calling me a liar? I didn't call you for dinner. And then they just start fighting in the middle of the ship. I mean, it was it was pretty raucous, okay? It was it was really nuts. Um, oh my god, can you imagine Rox's ship? Like, probably nobody was cleaning it. There's probably just empty beer bottles and just grog just spilled everywhere. It probably stank. You know, it, it was not a great pirate crew to be on, okay? And, uh, you know, it's really remarkable. Not only the fact the world government tries to cover up the very existence of the Rocks Pirates, but even the former members of the Rocks crew don't even really like to talk about it all that much. You know, Whitebeard kind of said to Odin uh, when Odin was traveling with them, you know, it was like, oh, I know all about, you know, because like Odin's, you know, when he first tried to join Whitebeard's crew, Whitebeard's impression of it was just like, okay, no, you, you're not the right fit for this because you seem like the kind of guy that does his own thing, and I have personal experience being on my last crew. Uh, it didn't work 
work out when you get a bunch of those people together. I just realized the Rocks crew was made up of a bunch of characters that probably viewed themselves as the protagonist of One Piece. You know, they viewed themselves as like, I, like, Whitebeard's like, I am the protagonist, and Kaido's like, no, I am the protagonist. I'm a young apprentice on a great pirate crew. I'm gonna be the protagonist of this story. And then Big Mom's like, no, I am the protagonist, you know? Shiki, Captain John, Wang, Silver Axe, they all thought they were the protagonists of their own stories, and they would always get into fights and argue all the time with it. And Whitebeard said to Odin, like, I don't want to deal with that shit anymore, okay? I am the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates. My crew, I view them as family. So, you know, we all get along for the most part. If there's a disagreement, we will work that out amongst ourselves. You know, we're not going to, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to fight it out to the point where we're going to, like, kill each other. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how it goes on Whitebeard's crew, right? And also, if you look at the other pirate crews that were formed, even, like, Big Mom's crew. Big Mom's crew, okay, she is not the nicest person to her, to her children, okay? But she is still, like, okay, to be fair, she didn't murder any of her kids when she's not in her hunger pang form. At least I don't think she did. All right. It seems like Big Mom doesn't prefer to slay her own children as long as she has her own mind and her wits about her. Okay. Um, yes, she did attack Moscato, but that was during a hunger pang. She attacked Opera, but Opera's still alive. Well, actually, I don't think Opera. Uh, Moscato was revealed to still be alive. Opera's condition, I think, is still unknown. But I think both of those instances was when Big Mom was in her hunger pang mode and she didn't really she wasn't aware of herself okay even lola who she hates you know she didn't like storm out of totland to find lola and murder her okay so it's like in that regard it's like okay big mom has her own warped sense of like what she wants in her own like her goals you know starting tato tato land as um the world where everybody comes together to be just like her and you know her children it's it's a really messed up family dynamic but okay she has that going for her and then whitebeard of course has his own crew with his own family right um you know i, I guess we know a little bit about shiki because a strong world but i think oh is going to shift a lot of stuff about Shiki from Strong World. His personality might even be different. So I'm not really sure you can really take that with a grain of salt at the moment there. Uh, Captain John, okay. We know Captain John was actually killed by his own men. There, there was a mutiny there. So maybe Captain John, maybe Captain John is, is an example of somebody that did not learn a lesson from, uh, you know, Rox's ship. He just maybe followed in Rox's footsteps. He kind of did the same thing that Rox did, and it resulted in him getting, you know, killed, okay? Kaido, even. Kaido, as soon as he found King at uh, Punk Hazard, he freed him. He's like, I will never sell you out, which is probably not something that Rox had as, like, a code of conduct with himself, okay? It was probably just like, you know, if, if, if it benefited Rox to sell one of his own crewmates out, he probably would have, you know, sold them out. Also, moving on to God Valley, which is really where this video's focus is, um, it was okay. You know, Rox was like the strongest pirate crew when you really think about it. I mean, Whitebeard, Kaido, Big Mom, Wang, everybody was on Rox's crew, right? Crazy powerful. But then you stop to think, because their crew never functioned appropriately like it was a very toxic environment for everybody involved they did not work together they did not treat each other as family with a couple of exceptions like big mom and kaido got along like uh, charlotte linlin was basically kaido's like big sister figure so so they got along fairly well i suppose uh well enough that they reforged their alliance later in wano right but aside from them and maybe a few other like you know smaller alliances that were on the crew the crew by and large did not function well as a team Okay, and you start to think maybe that's the reason they failed at God Valley. We l are led to believe that, you know, the whole reason they lost was because, you know, you have Roger and you have Garp. And then you get Roger and Garp working together. Oh my god, that is a devastating combo. Not only that, but you also had the Roger pirates that were there. So, you know, Rayleigh would have been at God Valley. Scopper Gabon and everybody, right? Uh, Sunbell. You know, remember Sunbell? Remember Millet Pine? I like Millet Pine. And then you got Garp, who, at the time, I mean, Garp probably had his own, you know, crew of Marines. You know, his own platoon or whatever. They probably weren't that strong, but maybe Bogard was there back in his younger years. You know, he had, like, some really strong apprentices. Uh, oh, wait. A second, Aokiji was Garp's apprentice. Would have Aokiji have been at God Valley? How old would have Aokiji have been at God Valley? I think Aokiji's in his mid. No, you know what? It wouldn't have worked because I'm pretty sure Aokiji is the youngest out of all of the admirals. Most of the admirals are in their mid 50s. I think Kuzan is in his late 40s, 
which 38 years ago, he probably would have been like 10. So, no. And I think we saw when Kuzan joined the Marines, he was a lot older. So, no, he couldn't have been in God Valley. But maybe Garp had some strong, like, apprentices at the time, right? Whatever. So... We're led to believe it was the Roger Pirates full force plus Garp's full force with his with his crew fighting against the full force of the Rock's crew and Roger and Garp managed to win out. But you got to think about this for a moment. If Rox's crew worked together as a team, if they were Nakama in the same way the Straw Hats are Nakama, Rox, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, Wang, Shiki, Captain John, Silver Axe. Plus, there might be some other, like, very notable pirates on that crew that we just don't know about. Higurashi was apparently on the crew, and she has the Mani Mani no Mi back in her younger years. Uh, oh, yeah, also, we now know that uh, Buckingham Stussy was on the crew. You know, we know that, so she was there, right? Um, the, the original, not the clone, the original. Um, and also, um, okay, Shaki is kind of debatable because now we know that Shaki was a former... Um, Empress of Amazon Lily. And so, yeah, Shockey did say, oh, about 40 years ago, you know, Garp used to chase me around the Grand Line. Was that because Shockey was just the Kuja Empress, and so she led the Kuja Pirates, and that's the reason Garp was chasing her around? Or was it because she was part of the Rocks crew, and that ties back to that? Uh, either way, I don't know. Shockey's kind of debatable right now. But we know Higurashi, and we know Buckingham Stosi uh, were all part of that crew, plus everybody else that's already been mentioned, of course. If they all worked in perfect tandem with one another, they might have been able to beat Roger and Garp. Like, it's not completely crazy to think that all of those pirates, in their prime, mind you, with, with maybe the exception of Kaido. Uh, Kaido was a teenager while he was a member of the Rocks crew. Although, no, wait a second, he was 21 when um, God Valley happened. So he joined Rox's crew when he was 15, but then they rampaged around the seas for like six years. And then at God Valley, when they disbanded, you know, Kaido would have been 21. So he was old enough to drink. Uh, not, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure Kaido never touched, never touched any sake until he was uh, 21 years old, of course. And then, uh, and then that's when, you know, the whole crew broke up and Kaido consumed the uh, Ua Ua no Mi, right? So if they all worked together, though, they might have been able to actually do it. And so then it kind of calls back to the pirate code and probably why Whitebeard and Kaido and Big Mom and everybody, for the most part, that we know of, sticks to the pirate code. Because they saw firsthand what happens when you deviate from the pirate code, when you do not care about your own crew, when people are getting into fights and murdering one another on the deck each and every night. You wake up the next day, everybody's hung over, and just like, oh. Yeah, who killed Bill last night? Oh, Kaido? All right, just, just shove him overboard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there you go, right? You can't, you can't function in a crew like that. It was also stated that the crew was formed because a bunch of pirates that were basically chomping at the bits to make a name for themselves fame and power and all that stuff now that might not fit whitebeard's personality as we know him like edward newgate like would would whitebeard join a pirate crew just for fame and power that, that doesn't really seem like whitebeard's character keep in mind we what we know about whitebeard's character is like from when he was in his like twilight years when he was in his 70s and then we go back 30 years ago when he was like around his late 30s early 40s during odin's flashback he was still pretty much the same guy but you know you you dial back the clock on a lot of these characters their motivations might be very different Oda's is very good at um depicting characters and more or less how characters will evolve and change you know the person that kuzan was for example in his 20s if you go back back and like look at like his flashbacks and his backstory it's not the same guy he is now all right like yeah the kernel of it is still there just like you know throughout your life you know the kernel of who you really are is the same more or less but like you you know you get older you learn things about the world you know it's just like you mature a little bit like there you go right so who knows maybe back when whitebeard was like okay so let's hold on a moment here so 38 years ago god valley six years before that kaido joined so that had been uh, 44 years ago. So that would have put Whitebeard. Uh, that would have put Whitebeard, I think, in his early 30s. I'm really bad at math, and I'm trying to shotgun a lot of these ages that I I don't remember about like Whitebeard or whatever. But uh, you know, so let's let's just put Whitebeard somewhere around the age of 30 when he joined Rox's crew. When Rox got that crew together and he started, you know, having just uh, crazy adventures down the uh, Grand Line. He's like, I'm gonna be king of the world or whatever, right? Okay, he might have been a different guy. He might have still wanted the family aspect of it. Maybe he thought he would get that by joining Rox's crew, and it was the exact opposite of what he wanted. But maybe he's just like, yeah, 
Yeah, let's go out to sea. Let's get some fame. Let's get some power. Let's get some money. Yeah, that's how it goes. And he's a different guy, you know, when we meet him later in the story. But yeah, you know, and, and a perfect example of this. Look at Kaido during his flashback. I just did a video about that, actually. A video talking about Kaido's past. And back in the day when he first met King and he formed the Beast Pirates, he was a different kind of dude. He was way more motivated than he was right now in the story when we get to meet him in the present at Wano, right? So yeah, people change. Pirates change. And and so that might have been this in the case with Rox's crew, right? You know, they, they went off their separate ways and they learned from that experience. They learned, you know, each of them, Big Mom, Kaido, and Whitebeard, who would all become emperors, learned about the kind of crew they wanted and the kind of crew they wanted to avoid. And Rox's crew was the one they wanted to avoid. So as we learn more and more about Rox's crew, the more it becomes kind of obvious to me that at God Valley, uh, there was a mutiny. There was a mutiny on Rox's crew. Not to say that, like, Whitebeard took out his, uh, Bicento, took out Murakumo Giri and, like, stabbed Rox in the back. Nothing like that super dramatic, but they abandoned him. They left him be. I can almost picture Rox, and we know so little about the man, but I can almost picture Rox as this megalomaniacal, just, like, one step shy of just absolutely insane. Where he really was a guy that was just, like... Ha <laughs> ha, me hearties! We will go out to sea! I will become king of the world! <laughs> it's like that scene in Forrest Gump when Lieutenant Dan is like on the on the ship's mast and he's just screaming at God. He's just like, you'll never sink this boat! <laughs> that was rocks! That was rocks. I'm almost picturing it right now. He's just that insane, okay? And uh, but it's like it's a charismatic insanity. It's a charismatic insanity, right? Like with Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump a little bit there. So maybe like, and, and also because the Davy back originated on Hachinosu, which is the pirate island, you could kind of go along with the idea that maybe Whitebeard and Big Mom and everybody did not join Rox's crew because they just decided to follow the man. He's over there screaming. <laughs> you know, he's like, they might have had a Davy back. And then Rox won the Davy back, whatever games they were, and they were kind of obligated to join Rox's crew. And it was like, let's do this, okay? So it might have been that situation as well. But, you know, loyalty and stuff will only go so far. So you get to God Valley where shit's really hitting the fan, and you got Garp there and all these Marines, and you got Roger there and all of his crew and, you know, Silver's Rayleigh and everybody there. And it's like, okay. And, you know, there might have been a moment at God Valley where legitimately they should have retreated. There might have been a moment where Whitebeard or Big Mom or Shiki or maybe it was Wang, maybe Wang was the trusted advisor to Rox D. Zebeck. Wang lays his hand on the shoulder of Rox and he's like, Captain Rox, I'm talking in a Scottish accent all of a sudden and I'm not very good at it, but we got to get out of here. It's Roger over there and Garp working together. We got to escape. And so then Rox just looks at Wang and it's just like, escape! Escape, huh? Oh no, we're charging in, mateys! And then it's like, all right, Captain, I'm out. <laughs> and then they just, oh, they just, he, Rox turns back to look at Garp and Roger, and he's like, you can't take down my crew! He turns around and his crew's just gone. They just left. They're like, okay, we're not dying for you, man. The insanity idea, that was fun for a little while. It was fun at parties, but we're out. So, Whitebeard and um, Big Mom Kaido, they all abandoned him. May maybe somebody stuck around. Maybe, like, Captain John uh, stayed around to help him or whatever, but, like, most of Rox Fox's crew abandoned him, so he turns back, his crew is gone, and he doesn't even, he doesn't even react. He's like, you can't take my crew down. Oh, they're gone. Well, you can't take me down. And so then it just became a three-on-one battle. It had Roger Garp versus Roxy Zebeck. And, uh, you know, in that situation there, it actually kind of speaks more volumes about Rox if it took Roger and Garp working together in tandem to bring that man down. He might have been so powerful, one-on-one -on -one, he might have beaten Garp, and one-on-one -on -one, he might have beaten Roger. Working together, they were able to bring him down. But if it was, if it was the Rock's crew working in perfect uniformity, perfect organization and they they loved each other and they were nakama and you know rocks was like hey everybody come here you know group photo you know they just loved each other and they were really they trusted one another to fight um who knows who knows it, god valley might have went completely different rocks might be the king of the world right now who knows 
But um, yeah, wanted to bring that up. Wanted to wanted to make a video about that um, because it's fun to talk about Rox's personality because we don't we just know so little about him. Uh, he obviously has connections to Blackbeard in some way. I don't think there's like a biological connection, although it, the timelines do work out for that. If you want to say Blackbeard is just um, Zebek's son. It does work, but I, I think it's less about that, just going along with the themes of One Piece, and more about the inherited will. Also, I feel like Blackbeard read about Rox, maybe, or maybe he found out about him from Whitebeard or something, um, and then maybe he later named his ship the Saber of Zebek because maybe, you know, when Marshall D. Teach was reading about, you know, uh, Rox growing up or whatever, or Whitebeard told him a story about it or whatever, maybe he's like, oh, I love this guy. Maybe, maybe Whitebeard was telling him a cautionary tale, like, all right, Right, teach listen up you don't want to be like captain rocks was right and he's telling him stories about rocks and everything and how crazy he was and uh instead of learning like oh to avoid being somebody like that teach was like idolizing the man so he like idolized rocks dz back and you know to the point where he named his own ship after him you know it could have been something like that right but you know that 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 speaks volumes where You'll even have, like, Big Mom, Kaido, and Whitebeard that don't even really want to talk about it too much. They don't even want to mention Rocks. They don't even want to talk about it. Like, they're embarrassed. They're embarrassed they were part of that crew that operated in such a, uh, like, unbalanced way. You know, where it's just like there's just no way that that could have functioned, okay? Um, yeah, it's like, like I said, it's like if you get a bunch of characters that all think they're their protagonist and they just, like, think everybody else is a side character, they are going to get into fights, like, day in and day out, okay? So that's just how it went. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about Rox's crew and how his personality might have been because I think we're going to probably start finding out about that eh, maybe relatively soon in the story. Um, as for animal facts, I've decided to end Urchin Facts. It was fun. It was good. I think it's it's all right to stop it where it was. Um, now we can move on to the letter V. We are almost done. We are so close to being done with this. Letter V, I would ask for recommendations, but I have already decided. I have already decided because this is an animal that I feel gets a bum rap. Uh, an animal that is just like you look at and just like literally represents death. And at the end of the day, it's just an animal like any other animal. And that's just how it lives. It's a scavenger, and of course we were talking about vultures. Also because we haven't really discussed a lot of birds on this list. We talked about quails, but that was like two episodes. Quails weren't really that interesting. Vultures, I think, though. Vultures might be kind of interesting to talk about, just because their use in, like, fiction and stuff like that, symbolic of, like, the circling vulture over the desert, you know, like, there, there's some stuff to discuss there, all right? So, vulture facts next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be teching... Signing out. Later, everyone.